Magnus Albion presents North to South, Episode 5, written and directed by Olivia Lewis Brown. Miss McGowan, is everything okay? Yes, I was just leaving. Without your gentleman friend? Yes, can you please pass this along to him when he wakes up? Are you sure about this? He'll understand. Where I'm going next, he can't come with me. Tell him I'm sorry. Are you... No, you didn't. Don't tell me you did it. You've only gone and shifted a nun? A woman of the fucking cloth? Shh! Would you hush your noise? And she's not even a full-time nun yet. You are a prime-cut, gold-standard, world-class, fur-lined, ocean-going Egypt. She's basically gone and cheating on God with you. You know, that makes you not only a feckin' Egypt nonce, but an Egypt nonce adulterer of the highest feckin' heavenly order. She's 20 years old and a consenting adult. And anyway, it's not even like that. I love her. Oh, do you now? Johnny, do you actually realise what you've done? She can't ever go back now. What are you talking about? You think she can take her vows after this? Relations out of wedlock is a sin. You've ruined her life. Also, you can play a round of hide the fucking sausage. <sighs> I didn't think. You never do, though, do you? Letter came for you. From Fingers Foley. I need you gone. Now. <sighs> Shit. To Johnny fucking thick wet boy. Come outside or we blow the fucking pub with everyone in it. First and last warning, warmest regards, Dara Foley. He's gone, my love. I'm so sorry. It's all right. Come back inside now. That's it. Your safe house was a good idea, boy. At least when we get there, you'll feel right at home. You must really love her, eh? More than life itself. I know what you mean. I just had a daughter. Her mother and I recently divorced. Split the house. She got the inside. I never really loved her mother, but God almighty, I love that man. We fight for what we love, Mr. Boyle. Of course, that one does create a problem. You dare go after her. I'll put an IED under your infant's cot and pull the trigger. Hoping to hear from him. He's not coming back, you know. Sister Jude says demons enter our lives to test our faith. I fixed your robes. Prayers begin in an hour. Are you sure? I'm sure. 
Thank you, Edith. A man delivered these for you. They're from him. My dearest, darling Dorothy. This is one of the two letters I've instructed Chalky to deliver to you. The first one is for the police. The second one, this one, is about you and me. Since I have met you, I began to believe that there may be a better plan for me. That I could rewrite myself into the good books of the Lord. But I know now, I am a condemned man. Always have been. I want you to know that our night together, in your body next to mine, and the sound of your voice telling me that you loved me, will be the lasting and most precious memory in my otherwise miserable life. I know when I got in that truck the morning of what might feel like my betrayal of you, that for a short time you'd probably be mad at me, and feel hurt or even disappointed in me. Please don't. I chose this not because I don't love you, but because I love you more than I love myself. I've never felt that way about anyone, and no one has ever felt that about me, until you came along. I know our time together was short, but I couldn't bear the thought of gradually wearing you down as you attempt to follow me on this inevitable path my life has taken towards my final destination, a place I always knew deep down I was destined for. I can't be selfish with you. I don't know if you chose to rejoin the convent, or if you couldn't go back, and if I have made it impossible for you to return to the arms of your God and your sisters, I am truly and deeply sorry for that. I am not always a careful man, and I regret many things in my misspent time on this earth, but one, I never thought kidnapping you would be the best decision of my life. I hope I have left you with more than I have taken from you, and if there is an afterlife, I hope to see you there. If not, it's been heaven knowing you. Goodbye, my angel face. Your boy, Johnny. <laughs> Breaking news from BBC Radio 1. The Conservative Party conference taking place at the Grand Brighton Hotel has been bombed. No. This attack was confirmed to be an IRA offensive with five confirmed dead and 31 injured. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, has escaped the wreckage and is currently Johnny, no. Medical surveillance. Uh, uh, full scale uh, investigation into the operative assailants. He really was devastated when you left, you know. Better if I ripped the plaster off now. You sure he's gone to Blackwater? Yep. Heard it from one of my regulars this morning. Police have swarmed the place. Do you think he guessed we knew each other? I think the poor lad didn't know his arse hole from a hole in the ground when he stumbled out of that room this morning. You sure know how to wrap him round your little finger, don't you, girl? What the hell are you doing here, Patrick? I could ask you the same thing. How could you just disappear without even saying goodbye? I left you a note. Patrick, you need to leave right now. What is going on? What are you hiding? If you want to know what's going on, sit down in that booth and shut up. Are we clear? (laughs) Don't move. I said don't move. Drop your weapons or I'll open fire. I'll put it away, Sergeant. I took the bullets out of your gun while you were sleeping. Give me the gun, Sheila. I told you to sit down and shut up. Ah, easy there, quick draw. I got enough in this gun for you too. You won't shoot me. Try me. Sheila. If you get in my way, I will kill you. Do you understand? Now sit down and stay quiet. Best do as she says, lad. What the hell is going on? Hello, Mr Foley. Do you recognise me? Of course you wouldn't. Because how many of your victims do you keep track of, really? 
all the same to you. Mothers, fathers, daughters, just target practice, am I right? Who are you? Oh, come on, fingers. Look into my eyes. Do they look familiar? Got them from my mother, no? Maybe my strong family jawline, just like my dad. No? Let me refresh your memory. This shamrock tattoo was the only way they could identify my father when they pulled him out of the unmarked grave you left oh, him to rot in. You're Johnny fucking Boyle's name? Aye. Oh. That I am. And I'm sure you remember my mother, Dorothy oh. Odella. Well, butter my balls and call me a crumpet. He knocked up the nun after all. He put a little bastard in her belly to call for revenge. No, my mother forgave you a long time ago. Even when you sent your man Constantine to tie up loose ends. I know what you've come here to do, brother. But please, don't kill me in front of her. Take me outside so I can feel the breeze, smell the grass, one last time. Of course, sister. And I promise, it ends here. Mr Foley will never know about her. Thank you, brother. Please, know I forgive you for this. I understand you're just following orders. She also told me who was to blame for my father's murder in a letter. Surprised me when I learned she'd been released early after being given a life sentence for the Brighton Hotel bombing. (laughs) Couldn't have that. (laughs) Look at me, Mr Foley. I want to savour this. This is what she felt. Sheila, don't! This has been a Magnus Albion original production of North to South, written and directed by Olivia Lewis Brown, featuring performances by Dale Grant as Johnny Boyle, Luisa Guerrero as Dorothy Odella, Hector McCormick as Patrick Gilroy, Catherine Ivers as Sheila McGowan, Paul Lewis Brown as Dara Foley, Natalia Campbell-Smith as Breach Brownlee, and Roisin Brown as Edith Plum. Original music composition by Liv Muir Wilson. Sound design by Lucas Costaboli. Narration by J. Michael Boran. Copyright 2021.